This is ESPN Esports. I'm Ardo Ocal. Happy to be joined from Whippo of Fnatic. Fnatic just fell to LGD Gaming in their second game in groups at the World Championship. Whippo, just take us through the matchup. It seemed to be very back and forth and competitive. What did you take away from it? Um, I think the biggest thing I took away was um, giving them the comfort picks that they got was a, a bit of a mistake. I think we tried to... Um, I think we try to avoid them having too much of an early game strategy because in the play-ins they had a very strong early game showing, but they time and time managed to throw and then the game fell into the enemy's hands again. But we felt like LGD had shored up those weaknesses and if we were to give them a more early game oriented strategy, we would have a hard time coming back into the game. So we decided to uh, play a, a bit of both and uh, try to get some early game matchups going on like the set into Orn, as well as get some scaling with Cinder and Graves. But uh, it didn't quite work out and they managed to outscale us in the end and win a, in, a, in a late game team fight. So let's talk about that matchup specifically. Set and Orn in the top lane. Long Ji loves playing the Orn. You love playing the Orn too as well. You guys have some history on international competition. Just take us through that individual matchup. Um, I think that in this matchup, there's not much Orn can do. It's really in the hands of Set and and, um, and the jungler to, to see how much you can get from the Orn. And I think we successfully managed to, to pressure him and, and, and dive him and take plates off of him. But unfortunately, that wasn't able. To, we weren't able to translate any kind of lead into an actual meaningful game. Uh, like a game advantage. Like it was just a gold lead on Orn, which he slowly farmed up. And as Orn is Orn with his ornaments, he crawls back into pretty much every game if he manages to reach level 13 with his two upgrades. So now you've played two of the three teams in this group. Where does your confidence level land after two competitive matchups against T TSM and LGD uh, in terms of Fnatic getting out of this group? Um, I think it's certainly still possible. Like I, I'm not, I'm not too worried at all. Uh, especially given the fact that we're coming in with our own idea of what what's good and what's bad and how we want to play the game. So, uh, managing to understand, uh, have a better idea of what is actually going on in the tournament and what what is actually considered strong blind picks and what are strong meta picks and everything is, I think, uh, quite crucial for any world's experience. Right? Like you come in with your idea on week one. Week two is when the real meta like groups meta settles in uh, and i think for example the echo into syndra answer seemed quite powerful in the other games uh melee mids into mages have uh looked quite strong over the course of the tournament so we'll have to see if those keep evolving but uh, all things considered i'm sure we can still make it out of this group i think it'll just be a tough battle for first second i think we can clinch uh, most likely uh, a couple more questions for you. I want to ask about the world's experience. I mean, you've been on the world's final stage before with thousands of fans around you. Now you have no fans around you. You're playing in a studio. <laughs> I just want to I just want to hear about your experience playing in this world and how it feels as compared to being in a giant stadium with fans around you. Um, it's still quite it's still very exciting. It's just the um the lack of the reaction from the crowd is definitely something you can notice, right? Like the, the stage trembling, uh, whatever makes a play, a solo kill, anything, like anything happens, you like basically feel the crowd, like you feel the crowd, you hear the crowd, like everything is just way more intense. I think that's the biggest difference between having a crowd and no crowd, but still uh, being able to play on a stage is still uh, a great improvement from playing online for the majority of the year. So I'm still very happy with this. How much did you miss playing on LAN? A lot. Like, I think it's one of the main reasons why I enjoy competitive League of Legends, because it just feels like the games have more weight behind them. And uh, even though that's not necessarily true, like we played from home for pretty much a, a year. Um, but even so, these games on stage, they just they have that extra, I don't know what, you know, that, that extra little thing. And it makes it very special. You know, it's way more memorable playing that game from, oh, I remember going on stage like this. I remember going on that stage that day, those pictures, like, there's way more behind it. My last question for you, obviously by now the Whippo cam is certainly a thing. We definitely got some reactions. Game one against TSM, the thumbs up, the reactions. I'm sure you've seen them online. Do you think about these ahead of time or are these all spontaneous reactions? Uh, they're, they're pretty spontaneous. Like I think today, for example, I don't, I don't think I had much emotion going on because I was trying to really focus on my matchup because there was all of burden on my side of the lane. Uh, I, I opted into an early game strategy. Uh, or like a more early game focused champion compared to Orn. So uh, I felt like if I wasn't able to snowball my leads and create an advantage for my team, that I was a bit li like I was being a liability for my team. And I think ultimately I was a liability in that sense. So that's why I was a bit more stressed than uh, usual. All right, Bwipo, all the best to you and Fnatic the rest of the way. Thanks for joining us.